So we are going to talk about like how to travel from Resolve. So you edit in DaVinci Resolve, right? So like let's let's do it this way. Let me say that. You do the editing. So editing is fun because you see all the shots there. You can add some like kind of draft music, add some draft sound, and you see your um, rough edit of your final result. It's ugly and it's unfinished, but it's you know the editing is there, and it's always good to have an overall look on on the editing. Then you you have this question. I'm going to send this to have to the VFX or to the post production, and they're going to add monsters and explosions and day to night uh, um, effects and rain and uh, fire and smoke and they're going to give it back to to the editing timeline so the day like next week when I open the timeline I'm going to see that this shot that was just a green screen now the green screen is gone and the mountain that appeared behind the person so this is the ideal like kind of pipeline, right? For the productions. Just think of yourself as a filmmaker. This is what you want. You want like a timeline that gets updated as the production goes forward. So you see your movie uh, emerges out of like rough shots into like finalized polished version. So so we use so how how this happens? So basically, this happens like this. So in the editing, you use Resolve. And you send. So, so you do some editing. So the same. So I just write here, editing timeline. I. So uh, in edit. So you do editing in uh, Resolve. You send the entire editing timeline to a software called Nuke Studio. Nuke Studio. So you you, ha you conform timeline. What what does we we say by conforming it? So it's just like okay, um, let's. You say that, okay, we have shot one, shot two, shot three. Who's going to do shot three? So you create an entire folder structure in Nuke Studio for your artist number one or artist number two, and then dispatch it to them. And then, and then they start working on it in Nuke. So they do the compositing in Nuke, so in Nuke X, let's say, compositing. So then, like, as you realized, we don't start from Maya guys or Houdini. So things from here is, is sent, because you have to do some, so the, the raw footage that you guys filmed and edited, we have a name for it. We call it plate. So like you're, so you have, for one shot, you might have, have like multiple plates, like, a, a, uh, a matte painted sky, green screen people, some some sh footage. So you have to do some processing on your plates. Then you send it to Maya and Houdini and and Houdini, and then they get and like do some rendering. Actually, these are not serial, so that's not the right way of. So I say and here. They get the everything rendered, send it back to the nuke, you do the compositing and all sorts of things, right? Then nuke and nuke studio, this is the beautiful thing. Uh, we don't need to keep, so this, we all talk about this to avoid keep rendering. So like you guys just, when you wanna send your footage from Resolve to nuke studio, you, don't, you see that we don't render. From Nuke Studio to Nuke, we don't render like we render like intermediate files, but not like so. We we try to 
So we do all of this to preserve the quality. So we don't want to lose the quality throughout the production. So these two talk to each other. And then when Nuke, so Nuke Studio, so uh, as I said, dispatches the shots to others. So let's say you look at the Nuke Studio, you dispatch the shots to others, and then receives it, versions it, like you create new versions of the shots. So let's say shot one, at the moment, uh, like you add a monster in it, the, the director doesn't like it, the animation. It goes for the animator, animation gets updated. A, a new version is received, a new version is comped, so you go to the ne version two. I'll show you all of this. Then from you send it back from Nuke uh, to Resolve. The language that like works between these two is a magical language called XML. XML is the way we send stuff from Nuke, from Resolve to Nuke Studio and receives it back. And I show you how. And here in the result, when you received all of this, you're happy, you say, oh, my rough cut is now a fine cut. I can do, I can add sound and like music and, and do color grading and that's the end of it and then our movie is ready. So let's bring some uh, sample footage here. This is Da Vinci um, result and I think I have copied some footage for you guys inside here called Black Magic Examples. So some of them are Black Magic Raw, these ones, these three. So the again, um, what, to make it faster, I just, okay. So this is what I do. And I suggest you guys, all of you uh, uh, do as well. So let me just explain that. So here, le let me ask these people. So it's Kristinette, David, Ayush, and William. William, sorry. So like each one of them are sitting next to a computer, right? So this is Kristinette. This is David. This is Ayush and William. They're sitting like next to four different computers. So like Christianet is doing modeling, let's say. David is doing, what, what are you working on, David, now? <laughs> okay, he's doing also modeling. And Ayush is doing, okay, okay, rough editing. And William is doing Houdini, like. So soon this will turn into this shape. One of them is working on shot one. The other one is doing shot three. This one doing shot seven. This one doing shot I don't know, 13. So how these four collaborate? How do you guys collaborate? How do you send and receive files to each other? Okay, so at the moment they collaborate on an online platform. So they use Microsoft Teams to send and to collaborate uh, as a as a collaboration platform. So, but the problem is this: as we start working with the shots and like Houdini, let's say simulations and modeling and textures and things, this gets like massive. This is online. Uh, I 
say online because I have an offline solution for you, which means that this only works if you are on campus. So you can use a shared drive called render farm here. And you can create a project here. So let's say you, you can name, what's the name of your project? The census. Okay. So this is the name of the project. Um, let's say. I think I, I misspelled it, but that's fine. You get the idea. Yeah. So, and then at the moment, I just want to like do some nuke project. So I just new example project but you get the idea so th this is a shared drive so like all of you can read and write there so here I create a so footage folder and I copy um, the footage that I had on here the footage that I had on this drive. So I had some examples here. So I copy them here. So now like I also can save my, uh, you can save your project, your project. If you go to the project, um, it's called if you go to the, your project manager this is where your project are but you have this like lo so your project are local or it could be on the network or on the cloud so but like we are working local, but our database could, you can add a library to your database. So here I add, uh, let me just make this one here as a, as a, as a favorite, so I can easily refer to it. So I can, What about network? I can add a network. Okay, it doesn't accept. I think because this is new, the free version of new. But that's that's fine, because editing timeline is passable easier. So I just start a simple editing. And I just grab my footage from here to resolve. Um, I should say Control I here. If you don't, can't drag and drop. Uh, it's the new Windows 11 uh, that stops drag and drop. Oh, how come? Our drive is. Anyway, uh, my resolve doesn't read the network for some reason, but that's fine. I just transfer this. to a local destination. And then read it from it. So. So let's say you make a timeline. I'm going to make a timeline with one of these videos. These are just th three like basic videos recorded mm, in, in, in Resolve. So in, in Blackmagic Camera. So you see that it's, it's 24 frames per second. It's like, I think it's, you know, 
2688 uh, bytes. So it, it has like a 3K resolution sort of. And so like I just make a timeline with one of them. So you can go to the editing. Create a timeline losing selected clip. I call it rough cut and create the timeline and then I delete that so so that I can start editing so you just basically your editing process is just going through your shots finding what is working for you and then uh, like you just add it to your timeline so this is how the editing works right maybe this one a little bit of a little bit more that's the shot three maybe and then this one from from here to here so um, so that's your editing I suggest so but your movie editing is not like this you start with some text for example so you start with some uh, text editor, text edits, uh, not mixer. Where are my effects? You add some text. I I don't know where is my effects folder. So workspace, show panel effects. Yeah, it was not there. Usually I have it like here. That's why it confused me. So you add maybe some titles here, like let's say you add some opening titles or like here you have some finishing titles. You have some, you do some, you have multi layers, maybe some layers on top of each other. I suggest you, you keep it rough like very simple uh, you may use um, just in the middle like here say that you add a dissolve you may add like transitions like dissolve or fading like these transitions or fading fade out don't do it now because xmls are not are buggy so sending like a complicated timeline is um, always just has a lot of problems so let's let me save this I I call this rough edit or like project rough edit I save that so let's say you have your timeline right now we're gonna send our timeline for the editing uh, let me open nuke studio so you see that we have a bunch of nuke so nuke Nuke X and Indie and Assist and non-commercial and they're all the same. So like Nuke Indie and Nuke X are the same. It's just like Nuke X has the maximum features enabled. But Nuke Studio is totally different thing. So like in Nuke Studio, you see a similar, uh, let, let, let's load it. It's loading now. So you see a similar like kind of look to, if I close this, you see a similar look to a editing program. It's not like, so let me open Nuke as well. Nuke X, which we will use for compositing. So Nuke looks like this, like you have node tree here, node graph, and then viewing and properties. But like suddenly Nuke X is, it looks like it has a big timeline and like kind of a editing structure. So what I do, I just go here and file, export. You export the timeline. 
and we export it. I, I'm going to export it to the same. For some reason, this doesn't read my look uh, network drive, but that's okay. I export it to the local folder. I call it, make a folder, call it project. And here I put a folder called XML. Make sure that this one is FCP7 XML. So we just want raw XML. We don't want like other versions of XML. Just very old, very basic XML is fine. You save it there. You go to a uh, new uh, studio. You go to the file, import EDL XML, and then look at the same uh, address which is on my desktop actually I should click here users here and get can I add that this is it I like to add this address on my desktop here I right click add yeah I just add my desktop here so it's easier to every time navigate through project XML and then that's the XML so when I open it I get my timeline same timeline here but you see that oh my colors are so weird here what it should look like in what what it looks like in in uh, resolve so which is raw footage you know that it's raw footage you have to go apply uh, black magic add a serial node and then label it as LUT or lookup table we talked about it last week if you remember and then add a black magic because it's a black magic camera with a lot of data in it so it's a black magic pocket 4k extended video version 4 and then you see like a like how it should look like uh, actually this is this is a good start so like but here all the colors are off uh, the reason is because if i double so so let me s save this project first control s make a new studio folder over there I save it as a project X whatever it is NS so like new studio or whatever you want to name it because uh, you see that it here when I introduce this sometimes it goes buggy and I have to keep close and open it so here I'm gonna say that you know what the camera metadata comes from the clip and the clip as you see guys says has realized that it's a black magic design camera with black magic uh, you know uh, black different like color sciences and it has realized that it's a black magic color space you can use other color space like AC ACES APO or ACES AP1 but uh, like, but I, I keep it as black magic design gamut. But here you can use other ISOs to get like a so like let's say so you see that it this is some sort of like overexposed. So you can do some exposure compensation here. Or what I found is that I like to just set emulate another ISO. So which is like 200 is a good ISO for this. So now I can see that like the color looks like accurate. So be careful about this part. Make sure you close this property and then double click on the second one. Oh, sorry. Uh, and this one, why this one has been undocked? I undocked it. Nope. Nope. I have to 
to dock it back. But anyway, so I get this one from the clip, and this one ISO 200 as well. And the last one, do the same thing. From the clip, it means that read it from the clip and ISO 200. So you might just say, should I always go from 800 to 200? No, like try. So these these are your two tools to to play around. So here, for example, you see that like I still think that like the sky is overexposed. So I can click on the highlight recovery. If you have like something that goes really off, like washed up, like there's too much of like, let's say if I go like here, 400, 800, anyway. So if something is too washed out, uh, you do highlight recovery. And also you can play around with the uh, exposure. So these two, like just to recover your uh, your shot. Here you see that the person who filmed these shots. So this looks bluish. So the shadows here are bluish. The reason is this: the the white balance is four thousand three hundred. While it's a day. The white balance should be around 516. So this is the right white balance for the day. So you can do some adjustments like this as well. Like here, also the white balance is set in a wrong way. So a daylight white balance is like that. So so let's go for 300. This reads the white balance from the camera. You see that this is like a day, but in a bluish way. But 516. This is like the actual time of the day that it should be. So you can adjust the white balancing here as well. So this is the right, I think, looks right to my eye. You can collect, so, so once I adjusted all of this, so I have my shots. You can, guys, you can uh, name your shots, so like editorial, uh, how can we name our shots? Clip. Anyway, so I have my timeline here. So let's start creating comp. So I save my project. And so let's say I'm going to start uh, tracking or doing some effects on this. So, oh, OK, this is what I said, that too many open files. This, this happens sometimes. You just restart your new studio and okay so this is the beautiful thing so like you you just right click here uh, right click on your shot and say uh, create comp create comp and it says where do you want to create this comp uh, on my desktop my desktop and this project folder and I create and and I call this new comps so here what I, what I want to save it and then open and it creates a comp there and it adds a layer on top and it automatically names the layer VFX which is which I like very much Le VFX one I can okay I can create comp for all of my shots okay so what this means what just happened if you look at your hard drive and your project folder you see that inside new comps for each one of these shots with the name of the clip that's why it's important guys to name your clips properly with the name of its clip you have this nuke and then inside that you have this new script and renders the script is a new script is a new file that says the shot 
the clip name plus uh, underscore comp underscore version one. So let's open new X. I don't double click on it because it opens. Actually, I can say that properties instead of nuke use nuke x foundry not found not here where is nuke there somewhere nuke and nuke here nuke x where is nuke x anyway instead of that I just open nuke x and load it there open comp and you open comp okay so hello this is nuke <laughs> so this is the first class at nuke so the beauty of uh, using nuke S new new studio is that you get the beginning of your shot and the end already set. So so in future, like there's a big discussion how to import your file, how to set it up, how to prepare for render. New studio did all of that in, uh, for you. So when when I start like when I do my FX there and I want to render, so I just double click on this right node and click render, and that's it and it automatically gets updated in uh, Nuke Studio or I can render it in Nuke Studio so first point if you send your file from Nuke uh, Studio here don't touch these two whatever you want to do you do it in the middle between these so what is Nuke? Nuke is a compositing program which means you like mix things together Base mainly you mix videos together so, um, and also it has a, a massive range of, uh, you know, tools for uh, making like great effects. This is a stand industry standard. Weta uses that. Like all the big companies, so like all the big movies, just use uh, Nuke. So here is where you assemble your notes. Here is you how you view it, and here is the properties of each uh, node that you select. So let's say here is this like read node that read your shot. You just double click on that, and everything that we saw there, like even this ISO change that we did, it's it's loaded. Okay, let's start doing a a, a better sky for this a more dramatic sky um, well how how we can add a sky sky replacement is one of one of the things that you do in nuke or in any compositing programs so I'm gonna talk about compositing for you this is this is important to listen I know that many of you are looking at gherkins and <laughs> and uh, other other things online but this is what you listen to it just now uh, the, the, the 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 principle of compositing is is very easy and it's it's a very very simple math so let's let's do this math together it's a seven year old no not seven year old let's say eight year old kid math so one multiply one is, so tell me, uh, one, one. <laughs> uh, good, so one multiply zero is zero, so let me, so, so no you didn't as a joke. So like instead of one, I just now put x. So any x multiply one becomes x, right? X multiply zero is zero. 
so so this is the entire these two things is the entire principle of compositing so you film someone in front of let, let's say you film someone in front of green screen so this is the person very happy acting just like me has a little hair and then acting in front of green screen right so what you have here so when you zoom in at this image so like when I if I grab like a, like a small portion of this image and zoom in and make it large very large I see four pixels four color pixels I see RGB right what is RGB so you see red And you see two greens, and then you see blue. So you can you can see if you if you're drinking something and if you drop a one of one of like one drop on your monitor just now, and if you look at it, you can see these RGB. So because eye drop acts like a lens, so. Like every pixel, ha every pixel is made out of four photosites. So these are photosites. These are not pixels. Photosites. These photosites, four of them create a pixel. So, like how this pixel is generated, uh, there is an algorithm on your on your camera called Bayer pattern if you want to know more about the math behind how it is it's very simple so it's it Bayer is not uh, name of a person who created this pattern to say that okay out of these like because you can't have RGB you ha one of them must be four one of them must be two because it's square like square pixels you can't have like so so we always get two two times more green pic uh, photosites than the red and blue that's why after digital cameras we use green screen not blue anymore in old days so when there were like s cello um, when there like there were these type of uh, how can I So if you remember, there were like celluloid films, right? On uh, plastic. So these like classic movies, like the sign of the movie is. So and these, these like this celluloid like movies, they were, they were made of chemical things. And they had three layers of color. They had YMC, like they have yellow, uh, magenta and blue layer so yellow magenta and cyan layer and in a chemical process the blue layer was washed out so that's why in old days there were blue screen because you you could wash the blue layer of your celluloid uh, like film and like then do like kind of like if you see the movies like Ben Hur or old movies. Have you watched Ben Hur? Oh. You guys are so alien to the <laughs> cinema. <laughs> so in 19, yeah, so anything like 1940, 1950, so when they were doing VFX, they were doing all of this like in optical and, and, and chemical way. So like, like, you know, there were no computer to process that. So like when they were doing this they were using uh, like chemical processes so that's one of them but now we do digital process after the introduction of digital cameras 
and uh, CMOS sensors. CMOS sensor is the sensor that, like these days, most cameras have it. It's not CCD, it's CMOS. Uh, they have like each pixel is generated like this and it has two times more green than the red and blue that's why we use red is uh, green red screens and, uh, oh sorry we use green screens and um, and that's why we film raw for VFX that's why I say I, I demand you to film raw black magic raw or if you have any other camera, as um, one of you asked, which but I think, uh, as long as you film in RAW, and y it's fine. Because I want you to bring to the class as much green data as possible to be able to extract the green out of your file. So I just said that. So, so all these four make one pixel in computer, a pixel. And this pixel has RGB value on it. So when I look at a pixel, uh, where is my mute come? Uh, uh, did I close it? Oh, no, it's not closed. OK. So when I look at one pixel here, like let me, guys, look. When I zoom in, there's a pixel here. So, so when I hover on it, a uh, new gives me RGB value here. See, so this one, let's say, look at the red. This one has much more red than this one. Oh, actually, yeah, this one has more red, but like it has more blue. But this one has much more less blue, and this one like has 20% blue. So, when uh, when we say like a pixel, a pixel is generated out of this. However, I filmed this person in front of green, hoping that I remove the green and bring something else, right? So then I go through a process. So um, compositing is basically making layers on layers so this is the basic principle in Photoshop as well when you do like Photoshopping. So compositing is just like to have layers and layers and like you you create, so, so you keep part of la layer and then create a hole here and let's say keep this part of this layer, keep this part of this layer, keep this part of this layer. Compositing is all about what to keep, what to lose, right? and at what degree. It's basically the same math that I said in top here. Anything multiplied one uh, stays, any mu anything multiplied by zero goes away. So that's why for this, for this uh, like green screen, we create something. If, if we would be able to extract, extract, or create, an alpha. So, what is alpha channel? So we make a a black and white. So the person is the person stays white, but everything else is black. If we would be able to generate to have a, an image like this and multiply these two together. So anything black in your alpha channel multiplied to the green becomes zero. So then that there will be a hole. Anything white multiply that image, whatever it is, stays. So a black, uh, an alpha channel basically is, is a transparency channel, is a guide for your layer to to keep or lose parts of it so then your data becomes r g b a this these are your tools of the trade guys these simple letters so 
A stands for alpha. So when you in in nuke, uh, actually, this is my other nuke. Here, so when I when you see like there's a there's this like red, green, and blue values, and then there is a white value which is is zero now, right? Okay, if I press H here, it um, H on your keyboard, it just uh, frames the selector. So let's let's find a sky here. So let's say this is like almost morning time. If I s find, so I'm going to show you like how to research and find things. So where this one is. It's in Oakland, it's morning, and you want an Oakland morning sky. So look at your images, and I want a nice dramatic sky. Uh, this is too early. Let me just take away this morning. Uh, this is not bad. This is more of a Oakland we see every day. And this is a much better sky than, than we have here. I don't know the resolution. Uh, it's small. So, But I can search, go to the tools, size, large. Make sure we get large files. Uh, this is a nice Oakland sky, but it's too washed up. Uh, actually, I like the previous one, even though it's small, but I save it. It's a web file. I can't say, it, but let's say if you search for some sky that looks like the, the morning sky. And that matches, so I, I keep it next to my, my photo here. So I would be able to find a sky that works well with this. This is not bad, but it's small. So, oh no, it's not small, it's big. So I save it to my project folder and I save it into uh, stock images. And I call this, uh, what is that format? A-V-I-S, sky. Is this readable to me? No, it's not. It makes new crash. But let, let's search more. Something similar. Adobe is stuck because you have uh, Adobe um, accounts. You can use OK, this one is a JPEG. Okay, so I just I just found 
a sky I'm sure you guys can do a better job so how can I so nuke is not like after Effects that you put the layers and like on top of it so you have to merge them you have to tell them I'm gonna merge this one with this one in this way so and it's very easy you press M on keyboard so M is your merge node M stands for merge and then it has one A, one B. So you can realize that A is the top layer, B is the bottom layer. So bottom layer is going to be this, but I, instead of dragging there, I just hover this here. So it just like kind of highlights and says, okay, I just drag and drop it there. So you see that this sky doesn't match with the frame, like kind of uh, attributes of this. Uh, this file because this file the format is 2688 by 1512 right so and also the frame rate here I think is 24 because that's how we recorded that so this is how you solve it like here in um, click an empty area and press S on keyboard this is your project setting and you see that automatically based because you sent this project from nuke studio nuke studio has done a project setting for you so like the file size is the same the fps frame range is also like as we expect so here so then you just press tab and say reformat so which means that reformat this so that it fits with that like kind of you see that it reformats it to fit that size. So this is my sky, but so as you as you see, it's like kind of uh, transparent uh, because this one doesn't have alpha. Lower layer doesn't have alpha. That's fine. What I use do what I what I do uh, is this. So first of all. So as you see, any node that I double click, it like the attributes open here. So I hold Alt and click on one of these, and it closes all of them if you don't want. Because after some time, it gets so much cluttered. So now what I do, I, I select this one and press T on keyboard, which stands for transform. And also, I make this merge node, double click on it, and make it like a bit like transparent. So because I want to use this, this transform node to locate this sky what I want. So first of all, let's make it slightly bigger. And then like I'm going to move it up here, here, actually here, maybe a bit here. So I'm going to art direct the, my sky positioning somewhere here. OK, that's nice. So that's where my sky is supposed to be positioned. So, but my sky is not supposed to be on top of the image. So it's not going to be A, it's going to be behind the image. So I disconnect this. A is this. And the sky is going to be behind it. But how? But this is not the, the look that I'm looking for. I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is, is to um, have the bottom layer um, keyed and like remove that, that uh, blue sky and replace it with this. OK. So this is a good time that I talk about a concept that you guys need to know. And that is each, this viewer in, in Nuke. So this viewer is where you view your uh, your files and not like after effects you on you have like you you all only have one viewer there but like here you have you can have multiple viewing this viewer number one is your final viewer like the outcome of everything but you can select anything and press like let's say number two here you see that I am viewing this or number three here so number three, I'm viewing the sky. 
number one is the final result number two is is this like this note here so I press number two here and I add a key here. this is like a very simple luminance key okay let's talk about luminance what is luminance luminance so your image let's say this landscape so you, you got the landscape here you got some trees and sky and like clouds and everything so your image is has like a var so it's not like zero and one it has a variation of values so it starts from zero so each one of these has some gray values or like luminance values or like how how bright they are some of them are very bright like sky is very bright clouds are very bright some of them like this tree so this has low luminance value so here you see that we have an image with different gray values so this is this is very important because many think that like the only way of removing a color out of your shot is only green screen or blue screen so like say hey blue go away so no there's a better way a more solid way sometimes when you have like a high saturated image is with uh, luminous luminous looks uh, so when when in such an image I have very bright uh, you know uh, sky and like dark hair foregrounds I can use luminance so here on your image if you press a it shows your shows you the alpha channel so if I if I drop two here you see the alpha channel is absolutely white what does it mean it means that this image if I press A again, this one has no alpha channel. Or it's, sorry, it has entirely, like everything is alpha. A everything stays. But now I want, not everything to stay, I want the sky co to go away. So if when I drop a luminance key and press A, I get an alpha channel. Can someone explain like what happens to this image? to the sky here and here three sky is there no idea what's going on here because it should work well
So once it's done, I will join you guys to go over uh, your animatics.